Let's take a deeper look at what's going on in the low Earth orbit. I'm joined by Keith Cowling, editor of NASAWatch.com. He's also an astrobiologist and former rocket scientist. It's good to see you again. We uh, chatted just yesterday. It's uh, nice to see this go up and go off without a flaw. Now, myself, having covered a number of launches in the U.S. at the Kennedy Space Center, I'm taken by the way this liftoff seemingly went off without a hitch. I mean, they're making the very amazing, very difficult seem almost routine, but it is incredibly complex. Well, it's good to be good to be back, Sean. Yeah, that's the thing about space these days that it, it, we're so good at it that it starts to look routine, and people are like, "Yeah, another rocket took off." But where the rocket is going, where the Shenzhou 14 went uh, to, to to the Qingdong, and how they're building it—that's the really big story here. And I think you're going to see some pretty exciting video as all these modules start to arrive and people go out to hook them together. That's going to be really interesting. Yeah, and it's going to be their home for the next 180 days, I guess, back around Christmas. So by the end of the year, if all goes well, that recognizable T-shape that comes with the space station will be in place. What does it mean in terms of experiments, knowledge? And we talked about it yesterday, but the national pride. Well, you know, the, the interesting thing about the space stations, and this may sound kind of geeky, it's not just building and launching them, it's how you plug them together. That's a lot. You may hear people say, oh, it's weightless. And no, it's really complicated. <laughs> and that's where you really demonstrate that you really know how to build and use a space station. But inside, once you have it built, that's the important thing. And if you look closely as an old space station guy, I look at the inside and I say, yeah, that looks really familiar. There are certain aspects of a, a laboratory that you build in space that are required to really do world-class stuff. And you can just see that already. But when you add these modules and more equipment, you're really going to be at the point at which, you know, China's contribution to the, the global space low Earth orbit community is going to be significant. Yeah, and it's going to happen fast, uh, very much the way so much of the technology in that nation. You know, one thing that has been noticeably absent, the coverage from almost any Western media. Why, why do you think that is? Well, you know what? I Yesterday, uh, the first woman born in Mexico and five other people went on a commercial space flight. It was a short one. And, uh, uh, you know, there was some coverage, but not as much as the first time it was done or the second time. And, you know, I'm an American and I, you know, I'm in my 60s. I grew up watching these launches and I would like to see more coverage. But you don't see a lot of coverage of what's happening on our space station either. So that's sort of the, you know, if, if you're becoming really good at doing this, it becomes boring. So that's it's good news and it's bad news. And in terms of the Western media covering Chinese space program and vice versa, um, I don't know why, uh, but I hope that at some point when when we can get beyond some of the politics and people start to be building multiple space stations, uh, we'll have three or four uh, commercial ones up there, that maybe this becomes something where we report on it like we report on global shipping or, or something like that. But we're not quite there yet. Well, it still has that new space station smell. And from one space geek to another, keep it in the news. I'm really enjoying watching this coverage. Thanks very much. Our thanks to Keith Cowling, editor of nasawatch.com. I'm going to check that out the second I get off the set. Thanks. My pleasure. Well, for the first